The American West, with its stories of wagon trails, gold prospecting, and abandoned towns, maintains a significant position in the annals of American history. Outlaws and criminals were notable figures during this time. They were responsible for most of the unrest and violence on the western border. There were also a number of amazing women who made their mark in the world of outlaws, despite the fact that the stories of male criminals tend to dominate the narratives. Let's have a look at the life of Pearl Hart, one of the most prominent female outlaws of the Wild West, and traces her path into a life of criminal activity, early life and troubled childhood. Pearl Hart was born Lily Naomi Davy and later changed her name to Pearl Hart. She was born on April 19, 1871 in Lindsay, Ontario, to parents who belonged to the middle class. Her childhood was a difficult one. Sadly, she had a horrible upbringing because of how her parents raised the family. Her father, Albert Davy, was a violent drinker with a history of aggressive behavior, including an arrest for attempted rape and other charges. Pearl and her eight siblings endured pain at the hands of their abusive father, while their mother, Anna Davy, tried to provide a secure atmosphere for her children. Pearl and her sisters were forced to confront the harsh realities of life at an early age when they were forced to turn to sex work to make ends meet, seeking a fresh start. Pearl met a man named Frederick Hart in her late teens. Hart was notorious for his engagement in vices and womanizing habits. Pearl was looking for a fresh start. They eventually got married, but their relationship did not last long after that since they fell out of love. Pearl was beginning to feel trapped, and she noticed that her husband was becoming a replica of her tyrannical father. In spite of the difficulties they were experiencing, they decided to go to the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893. While there, Pearl was mesmerized by the Wild West exhibitions and the daring acts of individuals such as Annie Oakley. Pearl's decision to leave her husband and embark on an adventure in the Wild West was partly motivated by the exhibition she saw and her desire to start a new life far away from her problems. The Journey to the Wild West After the conclusion of the exposition, Pearl purchased a train ticket to Trinidad, Colorado, where she intended to begin a new life. This was the beginning of her journey to the Wild West. Nevertheless, she could only spend a brief amount of time there before she learned that she was expecting a child with her former spouse. She went back to her family in Canada, where she gave birth to a son despite her reservations about doing so. Pearl was adamant that she did not want to continue living her life with Frederick, so she asked her family in Ohio to take care of her children while she once more set her sights on the West. After arriving in Phoenix, Arizona, she started doing a variety of jobs to provide for herself, but the excitement of living on the frontier was starting to wear off. Unstable relationships and desperation. Pearl and Frederick Hart met together again in Phoenix with the intention of making a new start together. At first glance, it appeared as though Frederick had undergone a transformation and was now operating successfully as a hotel manager. However, as Frederick's violent behavior became more frequent and both of them became more dependent on drugs and alcohol, their relationship began to collapse. Pearl gave birth to another child, a girl, but it was not enough to save her difficult marriage. In order to go to Cuba and fight alongside Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders, Frederick had to abandon his wife, Pearl, and their children. Pearl, who was now responsible for the care of two children and had very little money to her name, sought assistance from her family before continuing her journey westward. Life on the Outside After moving to Mammoth, Arizona, Pearl worked as a cook and a local performer, but was having trouble making ends meet. She was hopeless and had no idea what she wanted to do with her life, so she started making suicidal attempts. During this time period, she came into contact with Joe Boot, a former miner who had gone to a life of crime. Pearl went to see Boot for assistance when she found out that her mother was ill, and the two of them came up with a plot to loot stagecoaches and railroads. On May 30, 1899, they carried out their first successful robbery when they targeted a stagecoach in the area of Cane Springs Canyon and stole $431 from the occupants of the stagecoach. However, they were only able to get away with their crimes for a short while. Capture and Trial 
Pearl Hart and Joe Boot were apprehended by a posse led by Sheriff Truman of Pinal County. Not long after they had their first attempt at robbing a bank proved successful. This led to their subsequent trial. They had been on the run from the law enforcement personnel, and a reward had been set for their apprehension. On June 5, 1899, the bandits were arrested in the area surrounding Florence, Arizona. Their apprehension received a lot of attention in the media, especially because of Pearl's gender and the sensationalized nature of their crimes. The public's fascination with Pearl because of her reputation as a lady bandit led to significant coverage of the tale in the press. The second trial attracted even more attention because it was extremely uncommon for a woman to be involved in such daring criminal actions. This was one of the reasons why the trial was so well attended. The defense for Pearl Hart presented her as a victim of the circumstances surrounding the crime by arguing that she was a victim of Joe Boot's coercion and influence. However, the jury was not persuaded, and both Hart and Boot were convicted guilty of the charges against them, imprisonment and public interest. Pearl Hart was given a sentence of five years in the Yuma Territorial Prison, while Joe Boot was given a term of 30 years. Both of these sentences are considered to be of public interest. Pearl attained a certain level of notoriety when she was serving time in prison. Due to her popularity as a female outlaw, she received a lot of visitors, including reporters who were interested in hearing her story. Pearl was able to capitalize on her celebrity by writing her autobiography, which she dubbed The Life and Times of Pearl Hart, and selling it. In the book, she detailed her time spent living a life of crime. The book did okay in terms of sales and added to her public reputation as the Queen of the Outlaws, after prison. Pearl Hart was released from jail in 1902, having served only three years of her five-year term. Her post-prison life is described here. She fled the public eye and led a life that was characterized by relative obscurity. Although she went on to have more children and remarry again, very little information is available about her life during this time period. Pearl Hart's later years and her legacy include the fact that she eventually made her home in the sleepy town of Shoshone, California, where she had a simple and unremarkable existence. Her notorious history gradually receded into oblivion as the years passed, and she evolved into a typical resident of the neighborhood as a result. Later, years and legacy. Pearl Hart lived till the age of 84, when she passed away on December 30, 1955. In spite of the fact that her career as a lawbreaker lasted only a little amount of time, she is remembered as one of the few female outlaws who operated in the Wild West. Her life continues to enthrall historians, people with a passion for the American West, and others with an interest in the untold stories of women who lived on the American frontier. Pearl Hart's life was defined by struggle, hopelessness, and a yearning for excitement and new experiences. She violated traditional expectations of women during that time period in every aspect of her life, from her unhappy childhood to her trek into the Wild West and her life as an outlaw. Pearl Hart's narrative serves as a reminder of the complexity and range of people who lived during the time period known as the Wild West, despite the fact that her career as a criminal was relatively short. That's all for today. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. See you next time.